Hello Hunters, Autobot Dawson here, ready to roll out a quick guide video for you. And today, what I want to actually do is take a look at the end game system for Monster Hunter Rise Sunbreak. I know there's going to be a lot of new PlayStation and Xbox players who will be needing help with this whenever Sunbreak launches for you guys in a few months. And then, if you're a player on Switch and PC and you're just getting to the end game or you're confused by it, this video is for you. It will absolutely help you out and maybe even clear some stuff up for veteran hunters. Okay, so we're going to make this concise and informative. Once you reach Master Rank 10 and hunt your urgent quest for the Afflicted Arzuros, that's where the end game grind starts. So you've killed the final boss, you've leveled up a few more times, you're at MR10. And then, here we go. We unlock Anomaly Research. So there's two different kinds here. We have Anomaly Investigations, where you're going to be spending most of your time. And we have Anomaly Quests, which is what we had before Investigations were updated. And it's basically a catalog of all the different Afflicted Monsters. Uh, tiers 1 through 7 right now. And these are all like one monster hunts. They're quite difficult though. Um, they're unlocked through leveling up your anomaly investigations. That's how you unlock the higher like uh, 4, 5, 6, and 7, that kind of thing. Okay? So anomaly investigations is where we're going to be spending most of our time. As you can see here, these range from level 1 to 200 based on your anomaly research level. You have an AR level that you're going to upgrade from doing anomaly quests and anomaly investigations. When you're within an anomaly hunt, you can pick up any material that is has red glowing orbs around it to help you unlock additional anomaly research investigations. You'll also unlock extra ones from completing anomaly investigations. As they are completely randomized, the way that you level up a specific investigation is by continually doing it, and you can adjust the quest level down, which will actually change the rewards, as you see on the screen, as I'm downgrading this one, it's changing my main reward. There's Dire Claw Plus, Dire Claw, Prime Amber Essence, and as you can see, it goes back up when I adjust it back to its natural level of 197. It will go back to its original reward that we had, which was Afflicted Dire Hard Claw and Royal Amber Essence. So you level them up by doing them, and you can level them down manually. So, under that main rewards tab, that is really the focus of these anomaly investigations. Each one will grant you two materials. An Afflicted Material of some kind, and an Amber Essence of some kind, of different quality. The Amber Essence is used to um, allow you to curious armor craft, which will give your armor additional skills. We'll get to that in just a second. And then the afflicted materials is used for armor crafting and specifically curious weapon crafting as well, which is basically augmenting your weapon to be better. And so specific unlocks, which we'll show you in the blacksmith in a moment, require specific materials. So you're able to go through different investigations, grind them until you unlock ones you need, and you got Hard Claw, Cortex, Fang Plus, Hard Claw. As you can see, each one has a different reward. Okay? And the higher the number, the, the, there's different tiers of sort of the rewards. As I showed you with the downgrade here, the reward changed as the level went lower. And then there's also specific monsters tied to specific rewards. So, for example, Afflicted Dire Cortex is like the last part you can unlock right now. I think you unlock it at like Anomaly Investigation level 181. So very late in the game. That's quite a lot of quest grinding. And for example, it only drops from, I believe, Basil Goose, Espinas, uh, and one other monster as well. I think maybe Rajang, but I don't know that for sure. I know though it is Espinas and Basil Goose. And that's just an example. As you play through these, you'll figure out who drops what. Like, you know, Rajang... Here is going to drop Afflicted Dire Hard Claw. Um, so then in that case, it's probably not him that drops the Cortex. Basil Goose and Espionage are dropping the Cortex here. You got your Furious Rajong dropping Afflicted Dire Fang. You know, Almadron's dropping Afflicted Hard Claw. That kind of thing. You'll learn those as you go. So, there are also extra conditions here at the bottom. Sometimes these are positive for the hunter, and sometimes these are negative. For example, this one, 
has a condition of faint four times, so you get an extra faint. However, it also has max participants two, meaning you can only bring one other online hunter with you. However, you can still bring followers with you. You can bring followers on any of these quests by simply pressing X there and then selecting your followers if you're playing solo. So take a look at this one though. This is a really tough one. You've got Scorn Magnamalo, Furious Rajong, and Afflicted Rajong. And you've got failure conditions, reward hits zero or faint one time. Max participants two. So a lot of negative uh, aspects there. This one has a time limit of 30 minutes. So you gotta go a little faster. There's all sorts of different conditions like this. And you always wanna pay attention when you pick those. Any negative condition will actually increase the amount of anomaly rank that you get from completing the quest, however. So if you have the skills to do a difficult one with a lot of failure conditions that are rough for you and limits on time limit and participants, then you'll actually level up your anomaly rank faster. Okay, one more thing on this quest screen. We also have research requests. Now, they are changing this in Title Update 4 to not require a specific monster, but instead to only require a specific condition. But for now, we'll, we'll talk about it as it is. So Research Request has a condition of level 171 or higher in this case. That will be different based on what level you are. And then the target right now is Afflicted Mizutsune. Basically, you're going to always look at those, and if you want to grind for investigation coins and level up your AR faster, it's good to follow these requests, though you don't have to if you're getting burnt out. Um, investigation coins are another currency we'll talk about in just a second. So, as you're leveling up your anomaly research, you'll unlock more of the anomaly quests as well. Um, I believe 181, or now maybe it's it's 160, 171, or 81 where you unlock anomaly rank seven here um, for the different. I believe it's 181 where you get rank seven. That's the highest. Um, but either way, that's sort of how the anomaly system works. I know I'm saying a lot of words because there's a lot of nuance to this system, but the truly the best way to experience it is to try it out, and then a lot of what I'm saying is going to make a lot of sense to you. So, to quickly summarize, level up your anomaly investigations by completing them. Make sure to target ones of monsters and levels of rewards that you need for your specific weapon crafting and armor crafting that you're trying to do. And do ones with extra failure conditions or research requests to level up faster and get investigation coins. And be sure to pick up glowing red materials during the quest to unlock additional investigations. Once you level up your AR to a certain point, you'll unlock additional tiers of anomaly quests. Okay, now, now that we have the actual quest system down itself, let's talk about what these currencies do and sort of what the end game loop is. So first of all, investigation coins is a little simple. Basically, you just talk to Bahari here and as you go through, you'll unlock different materials you can, you can buy. So see, now I can just buy the Amber Essence there's jewels you can buy, and then afflicted materials you can buy as well as rare monster parts like mantles. So you use these with the anomaly investigation coins. So good to keep these in mind. But the real end game loop is over here at the blacksmith and is directly connected to the anomaly quests. And that is curious weapon crafting and curious armor crafting. And a quick extra bit, you're also going to unlock uh, decorations as you go through that require the afflicted materials as you can see here for example sneak attack is requiring di afflicted dire fling afflicted dire wing plus an anomaly jewel so even though this is a lucent nagakuga jewel i still needed afflicted materials in order to craft it so keep that in mind as well and now for the end game loop curious weapon crafting is what we'll start with you select a weapon and then you basically Add anomaly slots by using materials, which I've unlocked all the anomaly slots of this weapon. Um, right now, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. The maximum amount of slots is eight. That will probably go up in future title updates as it has in each of the other ones. And here's what we do, right? You unlock all these different tiers and they will say on there what materials you need to unlock them before you unlock them, okay? And when you do that, 
you can then choose to place things that have different slot costs to increase your weapon's attack. And it's affinity, it's element, it's sharpness, or how many ramp, like what kind of rampage slot jewels it can hold. You can upgrade that as well. So right now for dual blades, it's always good to go for element boost. I have tier six element boost on, upgrading my water to plus 20 higher. And then I have a level two attack for an additional plus five attack. Nice little boost there, making my weapon much more powerful. So you essentially wanna go through and do this for all the weapons you're gonna use. As you can see, here's an example of one that's not fully upgraded. If I wanna add the fourth anomaly slot, I'm gonna need an additional Afflicted Dire Hardhorn. So then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go all the way over to the quest damsel. And I'm gonna look here, okay, I need an Afflicted Dire Hardhorn. So I'm just gonna look through my list. Oh, here's one right here, Afflicted Seregios. Uh, so I know that he's gonna be able to drop that material, guaranteed. So then I'm gonna go do that quest. And that's sort of how you wanna get in the habit of the loop, right? Take a look at your curious weapon crafting, see what you wanna unlock next, see what material it requires, go to the quest damsel, see if you have an investigation unlock that drops it, and if you don't, keep leveling up those investigations until you do unlock one. That is the loop, you guys. We also have curious armor crafting, which you can spend your materials on. I'm gonna do an example here of, a, of a, just a random one. So you enable augmentation by giving up some afflicted parts, doesn't matter which ones. Okay, now you can afflict it. You've got stability, normal augment, or skills plus. I went over these in a different video, but to quickly summarize it, normal augment is gonna give you completely random uh, results. You could get additional defense, you could get additional skills, you could actually make your resistances worse, that kind of thing. Anomaly, uh, Curious Armor Crafting can change your resistances, your defense, your slots, and your inherent skills that come on. Okay, so for example, here I did a normal, and I actually got plus six defense, plus one master mounter, plus one sleep attack, and plus one fire resistance. So that greatly improved this piece in a way. Now, stability is going to have no negative effects where a large increase in defense is more likely to occur. So you have no negative effects here, but you're not gonna get any crazy skills. You're simply going to get large defense and slot upgrades. And then we have skills plus, which is great for quickly getting you an end game build because what it allows you to do here is sacrifice a skill in order to get a high level skill. So in this case, I got rid of flinch free and I got coalescence in exchange. So that right there is gonna help you get better skills faster. However, it is gonna decrease your resistances, so do be careful. If you're a hunter who carts a lot, you may wanna stay away from this one. But if you wanna quickly get a nice in-game build, um, like I did, because you know I work full time, I'm sure a lot of you all do, it's not easy to just sit here in the menu the whole time, um, could be useful to in fact do this to get your results faster. So for example, on the ones I have equipped, um, you know, I got rid of Powder Mantle on this Risen Kaiser Mail to get Element Exploit, great skill for dual blades. Same thing on this Silver Rathalos helmet, I got rid of Windproof to get Burst, those kind of things. So that is how the in-game loop is gonna work, you guys. Curious Weapon Crafting and Curious Armor Crafting are directly linked to the Anomaly Research System, okay? That's Anomaly Investigations and Anomaly Quests. Hopefully this all made sense. I know I said a lot. Um, I was planning on keeping this a bit shorter than it ended up, but I still am pretty happy with it um, overall. Um, let me know down below if you have any questions and I'll be happy to answer. You can feel free to subscribe to the channel for plenty of content and note that I stream Monster Hunter a lot and offer free help for anybody who needs any help with the game whatsoever. It doesn't matter what quest you need. I will help you complete it. I will help you grind out that weapon you want. Um, just subscribe to the channel in order to access that and you can actually go to our community discord from our community tab as well to meet other great hunters as well as even use voice chat or text chat with me while we're hunting. So happy hunting, you guys. Hopefully this makes some sense. Remember, your anomaly investigations are your main source of in-game grind. Pay attention to the reward screen. Um, 
that you see before you select a quest, and target quests that help you level up your weapon and armor in the way that you want. Thank you all so much for watching, and this will be Autobot Dawson rolling out.